thanks so much for being with us, Siri. Uh, Kona 2015, it's a pleasure to have you here. And uh, I'm excited to chat with you a little. I'm excited to chat with you and, and thank you so much for, for having me. It's great being here with you today. Uh, let's start it off with some questions regarding yourself. Um, I read that you were performing on a super well level, you know, and then made the switch to coaching. How did that come about? Um, well, when I retired in 2002, um, somehow, some way, I had achieved my lifelong dream of, of wanting to become a world champion in this sport. And I was able to do that, and I was able to put together a couple of years where I held the number one world ranking. That was a long time ago. I barely remember it. I mean, it sounds like you're telling me a story. Um, but so that, you know, I feel so um, grateful that with hard work and determination and, and dedicating my life to being an athlete that I ultimately was able to achieve those dreams. Um, something, a shift happened in 2002 where, um, I don't know, I just had this feeling come over me that I'm ready for something else and, and something else that's bigger than this. And um, it led me right into coaching and um, I don't know that I said to myself, I'm going to retire because I want to go into coaching. Yeah. But I knew that my time as an athlete was up. I was tired of being selfish. I was tired of everything being all about, you know, what can I do so that I can be the best that I can be. And, yeah. um, not that that's selfish, because I believe that following your dreams is, is a great way to inspire Absolutely. others. And Absolutely. it makes you a better person so you can give more to the people that you care about. Exactly. Um, but I, I was ready for something more. And as an athlete, my road to success was not pretty. You know, I, I made a lot of mistakes. Um, I've done everything in the book wrong, but then I figured out a way to do it right. And I think that um, that has really helped me as a coach because I learned what works, what doesn't work, what works with some people, what doesn't work with other people, yeah, yeah, yeah. and brought all of those um, experiences and lessons to the table as a coach. And once I started coaching, I had decided that I really wanted to do it um, kind of in the way that Brett Sutton does with the camps and the squad, and you see them every day. Um, I love that as an athlete. I feel it really brought out the best in me. And yeah. um, you're not only learning from the coach, but you're learning from, from all the other, other athletes. athletes. Yeah, exactly. So it's a really powerful environment. And so right from the beginning, um, there was an athlete, Jill Savage, who's married to Jordan Rapage, who's a great ITU athlete. And she asked me to coach her after I retired. And I thought, oh, wow, OK, coaching, yeah. I, I'd love to coach you, but I need to develop a squad. So I like started grabbed a few other athletes and said, hey, I'm going to start a squad. And, and that's kind of where it all began. And um, what I realized within probably the first you know, two years was that I thought that my dream as an athlete was like the most passionate I would ever feel about anything in my life. But when I started coaching and shared the athlete's dream mm -hmm. with them and, and worked together with them to, you know, achieve these goals, there's nothing greater than that. And um, that's when I discovered, you know, this, everything that I have done to this point um, has prepared me to do what I'm doing now. Um, so I feel really lucky that that was my path and, and it brought me, you know, right here. But that, how, how did that happen? For two questions. One, you mentioned Brett Sutton, obviously. Um, did he play a role there too, kind of suggesting Siri you might also give a great coach? Um, no, actually. Like, I remember when I when I retired, he kept saying, I want you to do an Ironman, you know? And he was like, come on, okay, take yeah. some time off, and then we're going to just start training. Just start training. I'm going to show you what to do, and, and you're going to do an Ironman. You'll be great at the Ironman. And I was just like, oh, my God, no. Yeah, yeah. Like, but, yeah, so, I mean, his passion for Ironman yeah. definitely rubbed off on yeah, me. Yeah. And, and as a coach, I mean, he was, he was brilliant with me and um, really kind of uh, figured me out up here. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And that was fascinating, and it was, you know, training with him was the hardest thing I'd ever done in my life. It, it was facing every single fear I'd ever had, but overcoming them. Yeah. Um, 
And since then, you know, once like, he finally realized that, no, I'm, I'm done racing, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do an Ironman um, and started coaching, he's been nothing but supportive. Yeah. And I really appreciate that because I learned a ton from him, you know, and um, I think we're very different. Yeah. Um, but we share some of the, actually a lot of the same philosophy. Philosophy, yeah. Um, but we're very different, and yeah. I love that. But he's, um, you know, a, an incredible mentor uh, for me, and a great support and a great inspiration as well because he develops these, you know, amazing athletes, oh, and absolutely. that inspires me to be better and to match keep that. learning. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. so he's awesome. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Um, Brett is uh, known for his specific philosophy, and there's probably um, a lot we can learn all from him. Uh, how did you develop your own kind of coaching style? You mentioned the differences. Yeah, um, there are a lot of differences. I, I, I use a lot of my experience with him, which I believe was very different to a lot of other athletes' experience with him. Um, I was also, when I was training with him, I was really curious, I was always curious about what everyone else was doing and like the people that were doing long course, like how were they training and yeah. um, it kind of just sparked my curiosity and from there, you know, just doing a lot of stuff. Before triathlon, I was a field hockey, ice hockey, and lacrosse player. Yeah. I have a lot of other sporting interests, and I believe yeah. you can learn so much from other sports. And, and yeah, just like Brett. Yeah, and so that we share for sure, and and, and I constantly want to keep learning and, yeah. and want to be better. So um, we share that for sure, and I think it's... Um, I think to be the best that you can be, you have to be true to yourself. You have to be authentic. And and Brett and I are very different people, and, and I need to honor my personality yeah. um, and kind of create my coaching philosophy around that so yeah. that I'm always being authentic. And, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's uh, I learned so much from him, but along the way, you, you kind of have to take a chance and say, um, you know, like with Rennie and, and our first Ironman in 2009, I'd never done an Ironman, she had never done an Ironman, and um, in the year leading into that, I sat down with her and I said, Rennie, you know, I'm going to come up with a plan that I believe is going to work, and I'm coming up with that plan not by copying someone else's ideas, but yeah. taking everything that sounds good to me and putting it together, and I said, and I want you to come to the table and give me your thoughts. And we created this plan, and, and the powerful part about it was that it was something that I believed in 100%. She believed in it 100%, even if it was different to what other people were doing. Yeah. Which but is I, sort of amazing, don't you think? There it is took someone some nuts, I think. Getting, <laughs> getting, I mean, from a really point of view, yeah. you, you, you start with something new, you start with somebody I, yeah, who's exactly. also starting yeah. you oh. in that direction, okay. and that's a huge oh, step, I mean, right? it, it gives me goosebumps, yeah. I'll forever be grateful for her for having that chance. Trust in yeah. me and yeah. trust in us. And obviously, I feel like it was, there was a collaboration. We talked a lot. We exchanged ideas. But we came up with a plan and we decided, you know what, we're going to go with this. And we're going to believe in it. And I think that there is a great power in belief, especially when you're sharing it with someone that you're working together with. Believe. And yeah, <laughs> believe, gratitude, yeah. Yeah. And fearless. We had to be fearless in yeah. deciding, you know what, let's, let's do it our way. We don't know if it works, but yeah. let's do it our way. And thank God, you know, it worked, it worked so far. So, so, yeah. so how, how was that when, 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 you, when you parted? You know, Rini left you, yeah. uh, and then it took a while, and then she, for whatever reason, decided to come back. How, how, how was that? Uh, I think, you know, when we both, we don't really ever talk about it, but when we both talk about it, it's like, why did we do that? Like, why? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think it was actually really important. I think it was um, important for her to step away and work with other coaches and get different viewpoints to really realize that this works for her. Yeah, and, and, and I want to go back. Yeah. And for me, um, I needed to work with other athletes um, to know that 
you know, it's not just Winnie, I can do this with other athletes. Yeah. And, and yeah. that was the year, uh, well, actually, I'd been coaching Leander Cave, and, and 2012, the year that Winnie was away and, and Leander was with me, um, we won two World Champions. Exactly, so, she did the double, right? And that, to me, um, well, that, that was really, really amazingly fulfilling, and I'm so grateful for that time I shared with Leander because it gave me more confidence to know that, you know, maybe maybe I do know what I'm doing and maybe I, I can, but, but you know, you always, especially for me, I've, I've always, I was like really insecure as a kid and growing up and so it was really validating. Um, but it was horrible, you know, because it was kind of like Winnie and I, you know, we were on this path and, and there's so much that we realize, especially now that we want to achieve and um, each year after this race, it's like, okay, you know, I think you can go faster. And she's like, well, coach, I think I can go faster too. And then that is our inspiration for yeah, the whole year. year. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so, I mean, as, as awful as that year was to have her leave and, you know, you know it never feels good to have an athlete leave. Um, but it really made us stronger, ultimately, and, and I'm very grateful for that. So it sucked during the time, but um, I wouldn't have changed that happening because I think it really helped both of us. Yeah, and then I think we we can see and feel here how passionate you are about this relationship, this particular yeah, uh, relationship. Yeah. Right? Oh I mean, my you, God, you yeah. seem to be made for each other. You know? yeah. I mean, like, coach, I mean, athlete, like. You know, well, we know each other so well now, and I think that that's such a a crucial thing is that communication, that understanding, yeah. you know, she knows how I tick, I know how she ticks, we know how to bring out the best in each other, yeah. Um, yeah. we know how to keep each other accountable, yeah. you know, to, to make sure that we are both um, on, on target, target yeah. and, and doing our job the best yeah. that we can. And, um, it's just an amazing relationship mm -hmm. that works. Um, I have all the respect in the world for her. I mean, mm -hmm. she is one of the grittiest, toughest athletes I've ever seen mm -hmm. in my life. And um, the thing that probably means the most to me is um, her trust in me and her belief in us. And, and I really do believe that um, the most successful I feel that you, you can take an athlete with a lot of potential and literally the sky is the limit as far as how much you achieve if you just stay stay on the path, yeah. stay on the course, trust, trust keep yeah. believing, yeah. keep growing, yeah. keep pushing each other and, and that's what we've done. And, um, she's just an incredible, not only an incredible athlete, but just a amazing yeah. And I'm so proud of her for that. Sometimes I, I'm like, I'm, I'm even more proud of her as a person yeah. than, than an athlete. Yeah. Don't you think that, that you need that you need this kind of personality as well? That you don't, you know, have absolutely to be at that level? Definitely. Just, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And you know, she. Um, yeah, you do. You need that never-ending belief. Yeah. You need that trust. You need that communication. And that curiosity yeah. to, to learn and grow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And and we're both like that. We both are always trying to get better. And we're never going to settle yeah. for where we're at. It's not that we don't appreciate, you know, what, you have, what we've achieved obviously. and what we have. Yeah. I mean, we appreciate that so much. But then it's always like, okay, well, you know, what, and what are we going to do now? Right. And um, yeah, she's just such a great inspiration and, and just, you know, the ultimate champion, really, um, as a human being. Which brings us to Kona 2015. So, what's the plan? Uh, obviously, we both know that people out there believe it's going to be very hard yeah. against Daniela Ritt. Um, so, what can she do? What, what can she do? I mean, 250 is, you know, even for Miranda Cockray, a level that's hard to beat. You know, how to top that. Yeah. What do you do? Um, well, again, you know, after last year, we sat down and, and I said to her, um, I think you can still go faster. And she said, well, coach, I, I can go faster too. And um, that literally happened the day after the race. You know, she, 
the, the wonderful thing about Rini is that she, what motivates her, now, now we have all the respect in the world, this is probably the most talented and amazing field ever assembled in Kona, and yeah. we have such respect for every athlete here, we know how hard everybody works, Daniela has set the world on fire, you know, the last couple of years, but to be honest, our focus has been Rini, you know, Rini uh, wants to go uh, faster and stronger than she did last year, so all year what we're working at is developing her swim more, developing her bike more, and developing her run more, and um, that's where our motivation comes from, is, is her achieving excellence within herself, and, you know, knowing all these other great athletes and their strengths and how, you know, whatever, that's inspiring and it kind of helps on a day-to-day -day basis to yeah. keep that fire roaring, but um, I feel really proud of the fact that this year we've accomplished the goals that we set out to do and that's um, improving all three and, and obviously in Kona anything can happen, you know, the, the, Kona, LA, and whatever she chooses to serve up. Absolutely, you know, Kona is Kona. Kona is Kona, but yeah. um, I know that she has the tools and is ready to perform um, better than better she ever run. has. Yeah. Will, will that happen on this day? We can only hope yeah. and pray for that. But, um, but then, think, then again, she is the three time world champion exactly. here. So she's got the confidence, she's yeah. got the experience, she's got everything possibly that and, you need. Yeah. yeah, she just needs to get out there and execute to the execute. best of her ability yeah. and stay focused on, on her race. Um, and, you know, hopefully that will lead to an awesome result at the end of the day, but it sure is going to be inspiring. It's going to be hard. There's so many amazing athletes. I mean, we're excited. It's, yeah. it's an incredible... Um, how can that not bring out the best in me to yeah. be surrounded by all of this um, inspiration? So, um, yeah, we've done the work and we know that uh, there's a more to be done. And we're just ready for the challenge and we'll be delayed on that way. Excellent, excellent. Thanks so much, Siri. Thank uh, you so much. It was a pleasure to have you and, uh, and I keep my fingers crossed. Thank you very uh, much. Just execute and I'll, I, I won't be able to watch because I can compete myself. So. Good. Yeah. Wow! Awesome! Oh, I hope you have a great day. Yeah. I'll cheer you on if I see you out yeah. there. It's so hard to see Oh, yeah. And you focus definitely. on you and then you. Oh, good luck to you. Uh, anybody else you have in life? Didi Griesbauer. How did he get? Um, who's 45. Yeah, yeah, And then no. I have two age groupers, um, two age group guys, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one's like probably the best swimmer all around. He's a great swimmer. Okay. So now he's getting stronger on the bike run and another one is a 19 so oh, okay. young, wow. little young guy. Amazing. Yeah, so it'll uh, be fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh. Thank you guys. Uh,